My friends, the occasion which brings us together has much in it calculated to awaken our sensibilities and cast a solemnity over our thoughts. We are met to consecrate these grounds exclusively to the service and repose of the dead. The duty is not new, for it has been performed for countless millions. The scenery is not new, for the hill and the valley, the still silent and dell, the deep forest, have often been devoted to the same pious purpose. But we address feelings intelligible to all nations and common to all hearts. It is to the living mourner, to the parent weeping over his dear dead child, to the husband dwelling in his own solidarity desolation, to the widow whose heart is broken by untimely sorrow, to the friend who misses at every turn the presence of some kindred spirit. Thus these repositories of the dead caution us, by their very silence, of our own frail and transitory being. They instruct us in the true value of life and in its noble purposes, its duties, and its destination. They spread around us, in the reminiscence of the past, sources of pleasing, though melancholy, reflection. We dwell with pious fondness on the characters and virtues of the departed, and as time interposes its growing distances between us and them, we gather up, with more solicitude, the broken fragments of memory and weave into our very hearts the threads of their history. As we sit down by their graves, we seem to hear the tones of their affection whispering in our ears. We listen to the voice of their wisdom speaking in the depths of our souls. We shed our tears, but they are no longer the burning tears of agony. They relieve our drooping spirits. We return to the world, and we feel ourselves purer and better and wiser from this communion with the dead.